I crushed a friend's foot once, almost shearing off all of his toes with the steel insert in his boot. I was working as a supervisor on an automated punching and forming cell, which consisted of a large material handling system, a turret punch with stacking system, two roboticized press brakes, and a panel bender. The material storage system was the length of the building and held 120 cassettes that each could hold a 10 foot by 5 foot sheet of material stacked about 4 inches thick. One day there was a malfunction that caused the cassette to get jammed up and me and my friend went into the storage system to clear the jam. There were plenty of safety measures in place. For example, when you were inside the system, everything moved super slow and the glorified forklift that moved the cassettes had a hand control pendant on it that had two dead man switches. If you released either of the dead man switches, the machine would instantly stop and make you wait 30 seconds before you could move it again. My buddy climbed into the area where the cassette was jammed and began prying on it with a 4x4 wood board. I was using the hand control pendant to move the forklift machine up and down, trying to help dislodge the jam. Now me and this guy had worked together on this system for years, and this was something that we had done before. And maybe because of that, we weren't too concerned with communicating every move we made. Long story short, he was standing on an I-beam with his foot hanging over the side by a couple inches, with me moving the machine up and down, when another I-beam that was part of the forklift assembly came down on top of his steel toe, leaving about three-eighths of an inch between the two I-beams. As the two I-beams created a shearing effect, his steel toe was crushed. When he yelled out, I immediately let go of the dead man switch. Now if you remember, releasing the dead man switch means you have a 30 second wait before you can move the machine again. So here he is, foot crushed and pinned in the machine, begging me to get it off of him, and all I could do was wait and say, I'm trying bro. Now this was a super soft spoken guy, but there was no doubt he was in absolute agony. Eventually the machine moved up off his foot, we took off his boot, and his sock was completely soaked in blood. We got in my car and I drove him to the hospital. To make matters worse, the ER was under construction, so where I dropped him off, he had about a hundred yard walk to the doors. I told him I would go grab a wheelchair, but he declined as he was in so much pain he just wanted to get into the hospital as fast as possible. After dropping him off, I learned I was not even supposed to drive him to the hospital at all, but to call for an ambulance, as if I had gotten into a wreck while driving him, the company would have been liable for that as well. It ended up that all of his toes were broken, and most of the skin on his toes was gone. He was out of work for over a year, getting regular skin grafts and other surgeries to repair his foot. In this case, we both failed to be acutely aware of our surroundings and situation. We we failed to communicate with each other properly and unwittingly entered into a dangerous situation. This should have been a very simple fix and instead it cost my friend thousands and thousands of dollars in lost wages and countless nights in agonizing pain. On that same system, we had a crew of about five people. We were a really close-knit group and all worked well together. It was a loud shop and we regularly yelled at each other and laughed and cut up while we worked. The turret punch and stacker were on one side of the material storage system and the forming equipment was on the other side. One day, me and the guys on the forming side heard the woman that ran the turret punch yelling at us, but we couldn't hear what she was saying. Usually it was something to the effect of, hey, do you have cassette 115 over there? So as usual, we yelled back, hey, shut up over there. She kept yelling at us, but as usual we couldn't hear her, so we continued laughing and yelling nonsense back at her. We did this all the time, and we figured if it was important enough, we could always walk all the way around the system and talk face to face. What we didn't know was that in this particular instance, she had squeezed herself between a wall and a light curtain to dislodge a jam in the stacker unit while the machine was running, and her hair had gotten wrapped up in the rollers of the conveyor assembly. As the rollers started to pull her scalp and hair off of her head, she started yelling for help because the next step in the stacking process would have sent a hundred steel lifting fingers straight through her neck and decapitated her. Luckily, a forklift driver that was driving by saw what was happening and broke the light curtain to save her. Bypassing the safeties on that machine may have saved her 10 minutes of production time, but it could have cost her her life. After that, we no longer yelled back and forth across that system. We bought walkie-talkies, and from that day forward, if we needed something from the other side, we communicated like normal human beings. Machine shops and manufacturing facilities in general can be some of the most dangerous places on earth. Those of us in this industry work every day with machinery that can literally rip us into shreds, crush us, dismember us, maim us, and certainly kill us. Modern machinery is far safer than it was 50 years ago, but sometimes accidents still happen. And it doesn't matter how long you've worked with a machine, sometimes all it takes is a split second and your life is changed forever or over completely. It's the responsibility of everyone in the shop to look out for yourselves and for each other, and to be careful not to get too comfortable with your day-to-day -to -day tasks. 
Taking proper precautions and following safety protocol may be a bit of a pain sometimes, or it may cost you a few extra minutes of productivity, but if you consider the pain and lost production due to losing a limb or worse, it's always worth spending the extra time to do things right. So watch those fingers and toes and be safe out there. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you guys again next time.